I know I look dead. We're starting with a half face of makeup because I'm testing some new products today that you guys have been asking about. First and foremost, I did get the neutrals. The is that what they're calling this? Yes, okay, I did get the neutrals all matte palette from Makeup by Mario. And then if you watched my vlog, you saw me purchase these a couple weeks ago, literally the night before I moved out of Miami. So I know this is a little late, but I still haven't opened up the new Patrick Ta blush duo. So I'm gonna put that on today. And then I also picked up one of the plumping glosses, which I really love this formula, so I'm so excited about it. So we're gonna play with all of these new makeup items, but I've been asked a lot about the Makeup by Mario Master Matte, the neutral. And it makes so much sense that he launches in his line because the original Master Mattes, it does pull a little bit warm here, and it did so well, you guys. It went very, very viral on the internet. So he launched this neutrals one, which is definitely more cool toned especially when you put them next to each other isn't amazing like how color is so relative to what's next to it even though i knew this had warm tones when you put it against a truly neutral kind of cool toned palette it really is like wow so my initial first impressions not on using this but when it first launched was i wasn't very excited about it it was boring to me i mean mm. boring but it made complete sense for the line for makeup by Mario's brand for his style of makeup and just going off of how popular this was I think it made a lot of sense was a little boring to me wasn't the most excited about it but if you missed my first thoughts on the original makeup by Mario palette honestly this is fine it's doable it works it has good colors great for beginners if you're walking into Sephora and you want to start an all matte collection this is great however I'm a Viseart girl Viseart is known for their matte eyeshadows. They actually are one of the OGs of creating an all matte neutral palette. And I just have always thought the Makeup by Mario formula, it's just not as good as Viseart. So I am coming in with that bias. <laughs> you know, for the regular person just going into Sephora, you will like this formula. But if you've gotten a taste of Viseart eyeshadows, just know Viseart eyeshadows are better in formula but that's up to you. Because I always do get asked about makeup by Mario versus Viseart. Viseart is better. Now, if you're not familiar with Viseart, I have the older packaging, but this is the neutral mattes from Viseart. And this came out way, way, way before the makeup by Mario, in case you wanna compare. And here's the Viseart versus the new one. For me, I think this original neutral palette is so well-rounded. Viseart also, I know this isn't a Viseart review, but I do get asked this. Viseart also does have a Cool Mattes palette. This is a Cool Mattes too. Now this one is like truly cool tones, like blue tones and purple tones, whereas the Makeup by Mario has just more neutral brownish colors. So for the everyday wearer, this one is definitely better if you're more into browns. Anyways, while I was like, eh, not that excited about this palette because I have Viseart in my life. So for my girls who said you were very fair, very cool toned, you were excited about this, which I think is really great because I can definitely see a world where my cool tone fair girls, this is way too orange on them. So I'm excited for you. So we're gonna play with we're gonna play with this today. If you hear some noise in the background, they're working on my house today. <laughs> okay, so $50, you can get this new makeup by Mario palette at Sephora or the Makeup by Mario website. And they say it's a first of its kind neutral toned eyeshadow palette. First of its kind, no, but you know what? There's not a lot of brands that really will create an all matte, truly cool toned palette like this. And I can definitely see Makeup by Mario's master behind color here. He is a master at his craft after all. So I think that's really neat. I'm gonna quickly swatch these on my arm for you so that you can see. Okay, so the top of my arm is the new neutral mattes and then here is the original one just so you guys can see the difference. Am I crazy? Because I feel like the formula of the new one is a little bit more soft and buttery. I mean, I would say it's a very close formula, but I feel like this new one just feels a little bit more soft, which I like, we'll see in application. But yeah, I didn't even realize how warm this was until you really put them next to each other. This is so neutral and nice and cool neutrals. I actually am liking this more than I thought I was going to because this is such a versatile color story. 
As boring and brown and basic as it is, this could be key for so many looks. So let's get these on the eyes already. For base, I have down the Koki Double Time Full Coverage Concealer. Been loving this. I don't know if I'm gonna do two or three looks today. It depends on my eye health pretty much because my eyes get irritated sometimes with multiple looks. Let's see, so first things first, I'm gonna start off with the white color. And I'm gonna put that underneath the brows. I'm using a refer number 28 brush for this. And this is a really nice highlight color. So this is going on really nice, okay. I'm using a 14 Max from Refer. I just want to see how these build and if they are different enough from one another. So this is really nice as a crease color and I like that they don't look too close on the eyelid. I can definitely see that difference in depth. Let's play with this color next. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just putting colors that look close to one another next to each other so that I can make sure there's not too many redundancies or any at all in the palette. And this one's pretty close to my skin tone but I can see the difference. And then finally in the top row, this should add the most depth here and it definitely does. Okay, I'm liking these formulas. So far, they seem to be different from one another. Okay, now let's get into more of a solid look here. So I'm gonna go in with this shade right here, and I'm going to circle this in the outer half of my crease, just going back and forth, and then bringing a little bit onto the lid. I think he's nail gunning molding to our wall, if you can hear that. Very easy blend. These don't have, at least the colors I've used so far, a crazy punch of pigment like you might get with Fizzy Art, but that's definitely more beginner friendly. Okay, we're gonna deepen a little bit with this. Now with this shade, I'm keeping lower, kind of in the outer V. Now for this look, it's just not necessary to layer so many colors, but you guys know how I like to do in reviews. It's really important to me to test as many shades as possible. So that's what this first round of looks is going to be. And then you can see how these colors look. Okay. What's up beauty R108. I'm going to smudge this along the lash line. It is taking up some lid space here. Don't be afraid to blend that up into the lid. And then let's just see this black. I will say, I know I did use a blending brush to apply this, but it didn't give me as much opacity. This is more of a buildable formula as opposed to a punch of pigment right away. So just the direct comparison between this and Busy Art shadows. Busy Art will give you punch right away, but that might not be a good thing for more beginners to make up. So just keep that in mind, but this is going on nicely along the lash line. I'm gonna take a blending brush and just soften that. Okay, so you are able to get this kind of simple, smoky eye where the darkness starts as close to the lash line as possible and then blends out and up. You can do this using only two or three shadows. You don't have to use all that I used. Lower lash line. I'm going to use a What's Up R108, and let's do this color to start. That's really nice and cool tone, and then we'll build up the definition with that shade right here. And then if you really wanna go crazy, get a pencil brush, I'm going into the black. Then keep it nice and tight for the lash line and waterline. Just really lightly kind of do that. And then you can use the first brush that you use to apply the first color. But the goal was to continue and create that gradient there. So that's how you can get a simple smoky eye. Use less of the light brown <laughs> shades than I did, but that's really pretty. We'll put some mascara on at the end, but let's do the other eye now. And then for this one, I really wanna stick 
super gray tone for this one instead of brown. I am going to use the light shade first and we're just going to use that to highlight under the brow. This is a must for me for any look. So this shade will get a lot of use for me. Why does my camera always focus on my ear? It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> Anyways, um, and then I wanna use this pinky shade. It looks like pink and pretty, but still quite cool, of course. I feel like this one, you could really get into the contours of the nose right here. Oh yeah, this is great for contouring the eye just in general. Ooh, I love this shade, it's very pretty. I mean, this is a solid formula, it really is. I keep coming in with my bias about Vizier, but it is a super solid formula. A number one maxi brush from Raffer. We're gonna get some of this gray along the side of the brush, and I'm going to use padding motions on the outer half of the lid like so. I just wiped the brush on a paper towel and we're going to blend this now. You know, all my eye looks, I'm never excited to do. And then when I do them, the matte is always just very flattering. I was gonna put this shade right here in my inner eye, but I think I'm just gonna blend the gray over. I mean, you could do that to brighten up the lid, but I am very much liking the gray. So I'm going to put that in the inner corner. And then I'm gonna go in with this whitish shade again, and we can use that to highlight. And this palette you can totally use to contour the nose. Take that along the sides. You know what I'm saying? And then for the ultimate smoke, more black. And I'm just gonna press it along the outer third of the lash line. Not too defined as you can see for a smudged look. And blend that out. Create a little mini wing with it. Ooh, this is really cool. How pretty is that? I did just do a little bit of an inner corner wing. Going into this really, I really like this gray. It's a really nice gray. I'm just gonna run that along the lower lash line and then we'll brighten up right in this inner corner with the lightest shade in the palette. And I kind of went right underneath the winged liner. Okay, so as I put on the mascara, I decided I'm going to do a whole another look, completely start fresh. This is his new Double Take Cream and Powder Blush colors. So he launched three new colors and if you aren't familiar with this formula, one side is cream and one side is powder and I mean these are a very viral, very popular product and for good reason. They're all stunning. So we're gonna do She's the Moment which is like this peachy coral color. So how he suggests to do this, which isn't my favorite but I'll do it. Powder first. And I'm just gonna pop this on. No rhyme or reason on this side. I just wanna demo all the colors. More so for myself, because I'm sure you've probably watched videos on these if you were interested at this point. Oh, but this is so pretty for the summer. It adds a hint of warmth here. Not just a hint, really. But it's bright, yet so warm. And then you can even go over it. And this will give a juicier look to the cheek. I feel like his formula has changed on these though since the very first round. They're still nice, but does anybody else feel that way? Like the creams just aren't as pigmented as they used to be. They're more sheer, but maybe that's how he prefers it. Well, I would imagine that's how he prefers it. I don't prefer to put the cream on top, but it did look good. It definitely works for sure. So this is She's the Moment. That's actually very pretty. I normally don't go for these kind of orangey, corally tones. Okay, now this next one is very popular, just enough, and it's that baby doll pink color, which sometimes is not very flattering on me. So that's the second swatch on my hand. Really pretty. So we're gonna put pink on the cheeks here. And I love using this formula individually, meaning sometimes if I just want a cream, I'll go in for just the cream. I don't necessarily always layer. Sometimes I'll just do the powder. This is actually on my skin tone, 
not the most unflattering baby doll pink. I actually quite like it. Blended it in too far using my concealer brush to tone that down. Oh, that's really pretty actually. Okay, and then we'll do a little bit of the cream over top. Ooh, wait, okay. If you're somebody like me who doesn't normally love a baby doll pink on yourself, this one is very pretty. I'm a fan of this one, right? Okay, and then we'll finish off with the new gloss that I picked up. He launched multiple colors, but this, I don't know why I've been using his plumping gloss formula a lot recently, so I might pick up more, but this is the shade Obvious. And these are the rich finish, which I think is supposed to be deeper in color. Am I making that up? Already lined around my lips, I have Hard Candy Instapout Liner in Boyfriend. Mm, these smell super good. Oh, this color. This is the only one I picked up. I might during the Sephora savings event Need to pick up more because I love How glowy and glossy this formula looks on the lips and it does have that plumping Sensation Ooh, this is a lovely lip color. It does have some deepness in there But for every day like with a light eye, I would really like that I think I gave my lashes enough time to dry. I have not been wearing falsies as much recently because what I do is a super thin liner instead of thick so it doesn't cut my lashes off. And then I wait for my mascara to dry and when it's fully dry, I just give one last curl. And normally it holds depending on the mascara formula, but I've just been loving that for a more natural mascara look. So the key is pretty much no liner, especially if you have like a hood like I do. And then if your lashes are short, because if you put black line, it will cut the lashes even shorter. Okay, so that was the first face play sesh. I'm going to literally take all this off and I'm going to do my final look for today. Okay, this is going to be the last look that I'm doing. This is the look that I'm wearing for today. Uh, so you know the deal with this palette. This is definitely going to be the first color that I hit pan on, if I hit pan on anything, but that one would be the most likely. So I'm going to use that to brighten up underneath the eye. And then I'm gonna go to the color right below. I love this very cool toned taupe. And all I'm doing is circling it in the outer half of my crease and I'm keeping it high away from the lid color and I'm blending it out. You know what, something weird happened. It got like stuck here a little bit. That hasn't happened with any other time that I've used this, like it didn't happen over here. So I don't know what's up with that. That's not a palette issue must have been me doing something maybe i didn't give enough time for my base to dry down anyways it'll be fine we'll blend it out so i'm gonna use that and i'm just gonna take a smaller brush and again i'm just keeping it on the outer half of my lower lash line for a little bit of definition oh i gotta hide the ear before it starts focusing on that okay we're gonna add a little bit more depth so i'm going to this shade right here and I'm going to lower this just a little bit. I'm going to blend it. And you can get just a little bit in the outer corner, but not much. And this pulls a lot more gray and cool than it looks in pan, at least from what I expected. I knew it's going to pull cool toned, but no, it's a little bit more brownie. And then against my skin, it looks very gray. But anyways, I'm focusing this away from my inner corner and I'm blending it out. So you should have a lot of lid space right now if your eye shape is similar to mine. And then I'm gonna take the tiniest, littlest bit of this. I mean, just barely, just for that little pop of depth here. Then do what you need to do to make this look soft. Today's look is really easy when I'm wearing. And then I'm going to take my shader brush into my favorite shade in this palette. And I'm gonna pop this all over the eyelid. And I'm even going to bring it all the way in the inner corner up here, just to create a really open eye effect. And then it might look a little unblended towards the outer part where you stopped applying the product. What I would suggest to do is take whatever blending brush you use prior with any color 
just use that to soften and then bring the crease color back. I'm gonna take a little bit of this shade right here on a 13 mini from Refer. And I'm focusing this right here on just the littlest part of my lower lash line. Again, for a little bit more definition. And then I'm going to take a 03 brush in my light shade. And I'm gonna put it right here again to open up the eyes. It's a highlight that doesn't involve shimmer. But it's still gonna do the same job of opening up the eyelid. And then I wanted to do shadow liner. So I'm taking this Trixie Cosmetics brush into this darkest brown shade. And I'm going to create a little wing and then just stamp this across the outer third of my lash line. And then I'm going to take a pencil brush and then I'm going to blend that. Take your pencil brush and soften that. This is the brush that I use for this light shade. So it's instantly blending the liner. Going to sharpen this wing with my Sigma Beauty brush. And that's the eyeshadow. I mean, it's such a pretty cool toned yet still wearable look. When I put the lashes on, you'll see. Okay, and then the last Patrick Ta blush that we have to play with is not too much and this looks like a great neutral blush that can go with a lot so i'm gonna use bk8507 gonna put this on the apples and a little bit back of the cheek i know i've gotten also into the trend where you put the blush way back but you know what i always think a good apple blush is so flattering a little bit higher than the apple but you know when you look dead on at a person I think it just gives it so much life and it's just cute to the face this color is so pretty this is like an ideal everyday blush color for me and then we're gonna go in with this really pretty cream just a little bit this is BK 109 brush that I've been using I love this for cream blush application and I don't have any powder on other than the blush so to not disrupt that I'm only patting no swiping but that blush is gorgeous of the three i think this is the one that i would reach for the most not too much and then she's the moments that corally one i think that one is a hot color for summer and then just enough that baby doll pink i don't know how much i'm going to wear that but in terms of baby doll pink that's a good one so for lip liner right now i have on the hard candy kiss and tell just around the lips i didn't say this but i did pick up a couple shades of the new house labs hybrid glaze gloss so i'm gonna put on the shade guava i think this one will look really good i haven't tried these yet Oh, that's pretty. It's a little sheer. In terms of my favorite formulations in today's video, I've been loving the Patrick Ta so much. So that one's my favorite. But this feels like it's going to have pretty good longevity for a gloss. Very pretty, very wearable color. So here is the final look for today that I'm going to be rocking. I really, really like it. So in terms of the products, the main focus of today was the Master Mattes, the neutrals. And I really, really like this. I mean, I think I'm definitely more happy with the formula than I was the first time that I tried the original palette because I was so set on comparing it to Viseart. It's not as good as Viseart. But... It is really nice, really great for the everyday user. If you like the formula of the original, I think you might even like this one a little bit better. It just seems a little bit more blendable to me, if I'm being honest. So I feel like this is a little bit of an improved in formula, if you ask me. Comparing it to the Patrick Ta, Patrick Ta is a little bit softer and much more heavy pigment right away. Personally, I do prefer the Patrick Ta formula over the Makeup by Mario, but the Patrick Ta just doesn't have a color selection quite like this so I mean if you were eyeing it if you're fair very cool toned I think you're going to enjoy this palette for me color story wise I'm a little bit more partial to the other one I think just because these can pull a little gray on me some of them anyways if this is a color story that you were eyeing and you think it fits your needs will fit into your collection you're looking for an accessory palette that has these kinds of tones I think this is a very, very nice palette. I also really like all of the colors of the new Patrick Ta blush. He really just 
kills it with the formula anyways like how beautiful is this one for every day this one is not too much that i just showed you so the colors are gorgeous colors are gorgeous of this new patrick ta gloss as well while this is the only color that i picked up he launched a lot more that i'm definitely interested in for the savings event i am liking the house labs gloss i will say House is at a bit of a disadvantage because I've been loving the Patrick Ta so much lately that I'm mostly excited about the Patrick Ta. But this definitely completes and helps the range out with House Labs. It just was something to kind of complete what they had because I believe as of now, they before this, they really only had lip oils. Now they have just a regular gloss and it's, it's nice. It's fine. I like the colors that they have. I also picked up Praline from House that I haven't tried in the gloss. I wish I had gotten two of the Patrick Ta instead of the house. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this little play sesh slash mini makeup review. Of course, these are first impressions, so make sure you subscribe to my channel and I will keep you updated in speed reviews and palette rankings videos. Let me know how you're feeling about this new makeup by Mario Palette. How are you liking the colors of the Patrick Ta? If you have any questions, feel free to ask down below. And I know I will get asked, how does the makeup by Mario compare to the Skin by Kim? I've really been enjoying the Skin by Kim, but I do think the color story of the makeup by Mario is just a little bit more thought out. Like you can tell a real makeup artist put these colors together, but they are similar, they are. So many matte palettes, you don't need all of them. So just keep that in mind. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.